Climate change is expected to increase the frequency and duration of extreme weather events, leading to more power outages, a huge stress on energy infrastructure, and a huge stress, therefore, to industry. Organizations across all industry are now facing pressure from stakeholders to implement long-term decarbonization goals. Milestone years such as 2030, 2050, 2040, 2070. Well, these milestone years are approaching, but it's very unclear how much of an impact an organization decarbonization effort is have, having on that milestone. So this is also the 15th year of Tsunami, and uh, we've agreed that sustainability is something that as a group we will focus on. The involvement of an organization like this would help in driving change and bringing things in focus and like you rightly said we may not have the answers but at least the right questions can be put up. My mind space is occupied also by the fact that when we talk of transition to a low carbon society. So we are talking of a win-win situation where the industry gains and also the environment gain. So we are talking of a win, right? and that win means is something which occupies my mind. According to IEA, by from 22 to 2030, the renewable energy capacity should triple, which means by the by year the year 2030, in single year, in one year annually, the installation of renewable energy should be 1200 gigawatt. To give a sense of that number, as of 22, year 22, the total installed capacity of USA was 1200 gigawatt, all types of fuel taken here. We have to reach that level and it is a necessity. There are many other companies, big, who have actually contributed, said that we will go 100% carbon neutral by 2050, even though they don't have a dedicated sustainability department or dedicated sustainability team in their own in terms of the way how to unpack the policies and get things on the ground or in terms of how can we actually make the So the industrial source of CO2 which is about one third of the industrial CO2 sources that needs to be tackled and that is why industrial decarbonization comes into play. Now in industrial decarbonization if I talk about if you uh, look at the IEA I'll just take a couple of minutes. So, uh, if you look at IEA, IEA has listed about 5-6 typical um, pathways uh, to go towards a net zero uh, situation. Uh, one is energy efficiency, one is behavioral change, one is renewable energy, one is uh, uh, low carbon fuels or energy vectors, hydrogen and the hydrogen economy and CCUS. That means we will need to tracking of that uh, So we are not in a position to use the existing pipeline. So we have to produce this infrastructure. We love the new infrastructure for transporting is good. You need to extract the most or reduce the most energy you know, amount of energy wasted in any processes you are running. And that's the that's the core and, and a lot of steel makers and closer to steel than cement or other industries. Uh, are doing that. In this perspective, what is important that if we uh, cut it down or look for alternative, so we uh, have moved down renewable uh, uh, path and we will successfully executed our projects. So if you can build in circularity of value chains into a rural development program, which is centered around distributed economies, we will get a whole flow of activities from which farms can take up. Now, if, you, if you, we do not start from there, we will never end up with this.